welcome to the latest Edison TV interview. My name's Michelle Livings, and I'm delighted to have with me today Peter Ostevier, Chief Executive of Arcadis, a global leader in design, engineering, and consultancy solutions for natural and built assets. Peter, welcome to Edison TV. Thank you very much, Michelle. Nice to be here. Yeah, lovely to have you. Uh, now, I have some probing questions here that relate to Arcadis, and I would be delighted if you could outline your thoughts as we run through them. So, first of all, Arcadis's full year results for 2021 were published in February. For you as CEO, what would you say were the key highlights for the year, uh, but also the fourth quarter? and then the outlook for the current year. Okay, um, I'll probably start with um, acknowledging that um, 2021, of course, is uh, was the second year, uh, the second Corona, second COVID year, uh, and our overall performance in the context of uh, what is arguably one of the biggest health crises we have seen in our life, uh, that's, that in itself already stands out, our performance uh, overall. Break it down a little bit further. Our organic growth was uh, was solid. Uh, our uh, margins improved uh, compared to 2020, and 2020 was already a pretty uh, solid year for us. Uh, we generated a, a very strong cash flow, uh, and as a result of that, uh, our uh, balance sheet uh, continued to uh, to further improve. So those are probably, uh, in a nutshell, the highlights for 2021. Yeah. So what about the sort of fourth quarter and the outlook for the current year? Our performance in the fourth quarter, particularly on operating margin with our goals for 2023, uh, then I think the fourth quarter already signals uh, where we will likely be uh, going forward because we had an operating margin in the fourth quarter above 10%, which actually is our goal for 2023. So in a way, in the fourth quarter, we already on operating margin uh, delivered on our goal. Yeah, fantastic. And so that really, the outlook for the current year is to improve on that? Yes, the intent is that we uh, continue to improve on our performance in 2022. Uh, when we look at the market, the opportunities, uh, uh, despite the fact that, of course, uh, in addition to COVID, we're dealing uh, now with an even bigger crisis with the war in Ukraine, mm. but notwithstanding that big uh, crisis with uh, the very significant human impact, uh, the outlook for our business is still very, very solid. Great, that's great to hear. Um, so in 2021, Arcadis launched a focus on three global business areas, resilience, places, and mobility. So how does this realignment of the business improve the outcome for clients? And also, how is it expected to benefit Arcadis's shareholders? In a way, it's a great question, Michelle. In a way, it's actually almost initiated by uh, clients, although uh, they will probably not take any uh, any credit for it. But in speaking with clients uh, across the globe uh, in the five years since I joined Arcadis, um, a number of recurring themes uh, have surfaced. And, and one recurring theme, which uh, ultimately caused us to form the global business areas, was that clients would, um, first of all, uh, acknowledge that most of our clients are local clients, and they would actually almost introduce their conversation with saying, I understand I'm a local client, but I really want to benefit from your global experience because my project in itself might not be unique. You must have done similar work for other clients elsewhere in the world, and I want to benefit from that experience. Uh, I want to see actually people you can bring to my project which have done similar projects. I want to benefit from the knowledge, the, the experience you've gathered. Uh, and if I didn't want to benefit from that, then I would have most likely selected a, a local competitor of you who doesn't have the global footprint. And most likely that local competitor would have been cheaper as well. So bring to me the very best of Arcade. So that is where our clients will see the, the biggest benefit. Uh, no matter where in the world they are, they will see us bring the very best of our cadres to their projects, benefiting from similar experiences elsewhere in the world. Mm. And then how is that going to benefit then your shareholders? Yeah, so if we are more efficient in, um, in not reinventing the wheel, uh, in reusing experience, uh, which we have gathered before, uh, then we will be able to a, satisfy our clients, as I just mentioned, and we will avoid to reinvent the wheel. We will become more attractive to our clients. 
uh, and as a result of that, we will become more efficient, more productive in, uh, in delivering solutions which have already been developed, as opposed to trying to reinvent the wheel again. Mm, yeah. So Arcadis has set 2023 financial targets, including mid single digit organic growth, uh, EBIT air, uh, margins of greater than 10% and a net debt or EBITDA ratio of between 1.5 and 2.5 times. Are you performing on these metrics? And when can we expect new financial targets? <laughs> yeah, that's a question we get a lot. Uh, uh, and the question, the second question, when can we see new targets is, of yeah. course, uh, connected with the first question, because if we are uh, delivering on the targets, which we are uh, already doing to a large extent, mm -hmm. then, of course, uh, it is enticing uh, uh, and attractive to ask for renewed targets. Uh, and we've maintained that we first want to deliver on all the targets which we've set for 2023, not just financial, but also our non-financial targets. Now, on the financial targets, we are creating that mid single digit growth. Uh, our leverage uh, on the balance sheet is already below what we set as a bracket. On operating margin, there's still uh, some additional work to be done. As I mentioned uh, before, Michelle, uh, we finished the year uh, with 9.6. Uh, in the last quarter, we were already above 10. Uh, so we are definitely trending in the right direction. But before we set new targets, um, I want to first make sure that I do the lever on all the targets we've set for 2023. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Now, Peter, I want to move on to sustainability because sustainability, building a carbon neutral world are key priorities for Arcadis. Could you elaborate how ESG targets are embedded in the organization and then how they're looking to achieve these priorities? Yeah. Um... Well, I would first of all say that sustainability is truly in our DNA. We've existed for um, close to 135 years. And if you go back uh, into our history as a company, which started uh, in the Netherlands, actually, then uh, we already delivered sustainable solutions before uh, sustainability uh, became a word in itself or in, before it became uh, mainstream. How have we embedded, embedded them in, um, in our um, organization? Well, as I mentioned before, in addition to uh, financial targets, we do have non-financial targets as well. Uh, as an example, we've committed to be net zero by 2035, uh, or in other words, get to Paris in half the time. Mm -hmm. um, our set of targets for uh, 2023 also includes, uh, for instance, targets uh, around female participation uh, at all levels uh, in the company. We have um, uh, anchored um, sustainalytics, or we're using sustainalytics and, and, the, and the measurements they do in our long-term incentives. Um, and so we have uh, a lot of things uh, in place, uh, which gives me confidence that I can safely say that sustainability or ESG in broader terms mm -hmm. is, uh, is firmly embedded uh, in our cadres. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And it kind of sort of lends itself to this next question I've got for you, because as part of the Arcade's modus operandi, it's looking to become the employer of choice. Why does this matter and how can it be achieved? Well, if you bring it down to, uh, to the core, uh, what we do is uh, deliver services to our clients and our people are absolutely instrumental. Uh, we can speak all day long about the magnificent tools and systems we deploy, but at the end of the day, it is, it is all about uh, people. Uh, and the passion of our people, the drive of our people will make our clients successful and will make us successful. So to make sure that people to the maximum possible extent uh, stay with Arcadis or that new, new people join us is absolutely crucial. It became also apparent to me uh, when I joined five years ago that, um, that we had some work to do there. Uh, that is actually why we added a fifth value um, to the values we already had. And that fifth value is people first. And I think that uh, really um, says uh, and tells the story. Uh, we are a people company and our people come first. If we take care of our people, then they will take care of our clients. Yeah. Yeah. So the relatively new U.S. Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021 outlines one trillion US dollars of spending. 
To what extent does this initiative support Arcadis's growth targets? And also, to what extent are there sort of multinational or, or regional initiatives in other geographies that might mirror that US investment initiative? Yeah, great question. This, of course, is a very, very significant investment, uh, probably only mirrored uh, in a way uh, by the European Union, uh, the Green Deal, and, and both of these plans uh, really play into our hands. Uh, they, they really address the sweet spot we have because to a large extent, they focus on creating a more sustainable world. They focus on delivering a better infrastructure, uh, or you could say uh, more efficient uh, and more carbon neutral mobility, uh, create more sustainable places. So all the things Arcadis is, is able to deliver uh, so for us um, and our growth, uh, these, uh, these plans do mean a lot. Uh, now, that being said, um, in, in the US, um, there's uh, this phenomenal federal plan, uh, but states uh, already have a lot of plans as well. And we benefit both from the federal plan, uh, but we also already benefit uh, a lot uh, from uh, similar plans which are being developed at the state level. Uh, for instance, in Georgia, uh, in Texas, in California, Florida, places where Arcadis has a really strong footprint, uh, we are already seeing um, uh, the, the fruits of, of our work. We have over 7,000 people in uh, North America, so it is a very significant uh, region for us. And, and again, these plans, not just the federal plan, but also state plans, and then combine it with the European Green Deal are of uh, significant support uh, to our growth plans. Yeah. Well, I have got one final question for you, if that's OK. Um, how do you think about, and this is you personally, how do you think about the Arcadis organisation? Is it well balanced in terms of its geographical footprint and activities? And, or are there parts of the organisation that require greater scale or indeed might be subscale and could be de-emphasised? And is this something that can be addressed via the M&A activity, the mergers and acquisition? Yeah. No, I think um, we have done a lot of work over the last uh, three, four years uh, to uh, provide focus uh, in the organization to make sure that we are in the right place, that we are capable of, uh, of serving the right clients. In addition, of course, we've done a lot of work to uh, uh, strengthen and shore up our, our balance sheet. So we are now in a, in a position uh, to also address m and as you uh, as you pointed out. And, and m and for us will come uh, in the form of uh, small uh, bolt-on type of acquisitions uh, or what we describe as mid-size acquisitions. Mm -hmm. They should ideally be and will ideally be in places where we already have uh, an existence, where we have a right to play and an opportunity to win. Uh, and you have to then think about uh, North America, uh, of course, Europe, the UK, Australia, um, and certain parts of Asia, that will be our areas of focus. And then ideally, we also want any m &A to check uh, a number of additional boxes. Uh, they need to be an additional uh, asset to our sustainability focus, uh, and they need to also have a high degree of, of digital capability. Ideally, both, but those are sort of at a high level, the things we look at. Uh, to decide on our M&A uh, opportunities. Yeah. Well, listen, Peter, it's been great chatting to you, really insightful, and thank you so much for joining us here at Edison TV. My pleasure, Michelle. Good to see you.